see in a moment. When I started the job two years ago, the roots of the oak tree were underwater and the waves were lapping at the big rock. By the way, the road up to the cave is paved. But the pavement can't go down into the lake, so it starts here at the tree line. It'll be a little smoother the rest of the way up. Welcome to the beginning of the bus tour. Now, thank you, thank you. I'll be here all week. Uh, we still park them up here. We've got another 1.4 miles to go. We're going to rise another 800 vertical feet before we get to the visitor center and the cave tour. We're going to be rising through a mixed forest zone. That means it contains both deciduous trees, the kind that lose their leaves in the winter, and evergreen trees, the kind that do not. So this is Manzanita, by the way, on this uh, particular corner with its lovely red bark and silvery green leaves. Very common in this area, and we're kind of spoiled, those of us that grew up here, but uh, especially folks from out of the area, common and what an unusual and lovely tree it is. These, uh, well, we'll start with the ponderosa pines coming around the corner here. Uh, of the conifers, which are all evergreen, these have a kind of plate-like bark and few limbs near the bottom. The ponderosas are the largest of the pine trees. The two smaller varieties are gray pine and western white pine. There's also Douglas fir. These oak trees with the very small leaves are called live oak because the leaves don't die all at once at the end of the year. They lose their leaves bit by bit throughout the year, making them evergreen. These other two varieties of oak, like this white oak and this so they do lose their leaves, but they're all oaks, they all produce acorn. But one plant that is not an oak, strangely, is the one that I need to really tell you about or per perhaps warn you about. Who knows what I'm talking about? Poison ivy. Poison, poison oak, yes. You said poison ivy? Poison oak is not related to the oak trees. Its closest relative is poison ivy. And poison oak and poison ivy are the same in almost every important respect, including the production of urushiol, which is the stuff that most of us are allergic to. Urushiol is a resin, not an oil, so it sticks like glue. That's why it's so easy to catch poison oak or poison ivy. If you just gently brush up against the plant, a little bit of that urushiol resin will stick to your clothing or your skin. Uh, four out of five of us at least are allergic to it. So be very careful. There shouldn't be any uh, within arm's reach of anywhere that you're going to be today. We've done our very best to keep it back from the trail. Nevertheless, we spend about a minute or so talking about it because it's really that bad if you catch it. So uh, even though there's not supposed to be any within reach, don't take any chances. If you don't know what a plant is, please don't touch it. You do not want to catch urushiol induced topical dermatitis because it is no joke. And while you're not touching the plants, it's probably a good idea not to touch the animals either. We uh, do have not just dangerous plants, but also dangerous animals in the forest. I do want to assure you there are no dangerous animals in the cave. Oh, but there are in the forest. We have not just one, we have two different kinds of squirrel. That's the truth. We also have two kinds of fox. We have red foxes and we have gray foxes. We have ring-tailed cats, super cute. Bob cats, kind of cute. Mountain lions, cute's not exactly the right word. They are kind of good looking. I think majestic is the better word. For a mountain lion. Uh, we have several species of large bird. The most commonly seen are the turkey vultures. You may have even seen them already today. We also have bald eagles as well as golden eagles, peregrine falcons, the fastest animal on the planet, cheetah, shmita, I don't care what they told you about the cheetah, fastest land animal. The peregrine falcon can hit 280 miles an hour when in a dive. We don't have cheetahs. But we have mountain lions and they're fast enough. The biggest animals that we see uh, during the bus ride are the black-tailed deer and every once in a while a black bear. So I haven't seen a bear since the 4th of July, so I'm overdue. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, all right. One holiday to the next. I've had 24 bear sightings in 28 months on the job. 
mostly driving a bus. You wouldn't believe what good bus drivers bears are. Uh, if we do see a bear, it's safe to slow down or even stop to take pictures as long as everyone stays on the bus. If you want to get off the bus and pose with the bear, we'll pick you up on the way back. It's all the yogi bear. That's right. Yeah, but get in, in between him and the picnic basket and see how friendly he is. Nobody down there and unit two is halfway back. So the lake uh, is a bit unusual. Most artificially created lakes are made by damming up a single river. It overflows its banks and creates the lake. But in the case of Shasta Lake, there were four rivers that flowed together very uh, near one another and the dam was built just downstream from that. And it's, uh, the, that's right. Uh, uh, it's uh, uh, Sacramento, Pitt River, Squaw Creek, and the McLeod River. This is the McLeod arm of the lake. You can imagine once just the McLeod River winding through this valley. The uh, dam was begun in 1938 and completed in 1945, but it wasn't until 1950 that the lake was full for the first time. The uh, process of filling the lake took out over a dozen little towns. Oh. That was part of the process. They so knew the that was going to happen. Buried? Well, they're not exactly, so they actually dismantled, this was right at the end of the Great Depression. They dismantled the buildings and they reused every last scrap of reusable building material from those buildings in other nearby towns. Uh, the concrete stuff, though, was not taken apart. Some of the old bridges and railroad tunnels are starting to come out of the water now, so you can go see those. Uh, you can see our neighbor's Holiday Harbor. You can see where you got on the boat. The uh, Queen is already back waiting for the next tour to come down. Holiday Harbor is one of six marinas where you can rent houseboats, add them all together, over 300 houseboats available for rent on this lake. In this wide spot out here in the distance was one of the towns that was destroyed by the creation of the lake. In this case, it was Baird, California. They're important to our story. In 1872, they became home to the very first national fish hatchery in the United States. And of the three earliest people known to have explored the cave, two of them worked at the Baird Fish Hatchery. And you're going to see those two names on your tour today. Charles Morton and James Richardson left their name in the cave on an expedition that took place in 1878. You're going to see twice as much of the cave as they did, however, uh, because the tour company that Jerry Ann and I work for found half of the tour by accident digging into the other half. So you'll see the newly discovered rooms first. As you climb higher, you'll see the rooms explored by the fish hatchery guys in the 1870s. The last room on your tour was the first ever explored. All right, anybody afraid of heights, it's time for you to look left. If you fear nothing in the universe, you may look to the right. Jerry Ann, keep your eyes on the road, please. Sure your hearts were